Hi everyone, welcome to Third Coast Gaming Impressions. It is March 21st. Y'all are probably listening to this on Tuesday, I'm thinking. It's uh, episode 22, and uh, we got we got some stuff to wrap up. Uh, I think Austin beat Final Fantasy VII Remake, and then I think I was playing some Ratchet and & Clank, and some Stubbs the Rebel Zombie some Baldur's Gate 3 as well maybe. All right, let's let's start with remake. What's up? You beat it? You 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 look you got to the ending and the dimensions happened. Tell me <laughs> that ending. They spoilers. We're going to get into spoilers. <laughs> the vital like so yeah, so like yeah, spoilers abound for this obviously. Um like when we last we spoke, I had just like basically just done the like the falling of like the plate, right? The sector seven plate, and it just gotten through like a scenario uh, there, and then I did the rest of that uh, game, which is like uh, the last round of side quests, and then yeah, and then Red Thirteen shows up and he rescue he mission to get Harris out of the Shenron headquarters <laughs> in this really yeah. Oh yeah, like he climbs them, right? Because Red Thirteen has like I guess paws, so he can like get his claws into like the grating, and yeah, he's a he's, he's like a what, like a chain link yeah. fence type like texture that he like claws onto and just runs on. Um, yeah, and then you you know you do this, you get to this whole section. Uh, unfortunately, they continue to make Tifa the person who's like, I don't know if we should be fighting Shinra. People work here, and then Barrett delivers. Barrett delivers like the most like cohesive sort of statement on like the original Final Fantasy VII's like politics regarding uh, corporate greed, which is really dope. Um, yeah, and then you get this really extended like save Aerith section. You go, you meet uh, the president of Shinra who gets got by Sephiroth. Yeah, and you fight the Shinra um, president, and that fight kind of sucks. And then I saw, I hated that fight. He just man. shot me so much, and I was just like, what am I? doing because you're by yourself when you're fighting oh, him it was a it was a terrible fight because yeah so like you fight rufus shinra and he's like the son of the original shinra president and in the original game rufus is not a tough fight like rufus is not a serious fight he's kind of shows up thinks he's really cool and then you just wipe the floor with him in this one he shows up and he encounter any attack you do unless you yeah and he's got a dog first. You kill the dog first. And like, then... even if you attack him while he's reloading, yeah. he will counter That fight's you. not great. And then after that, you're yeah, the like... Yeah, you have to kill the yeah. dog. Um, escaping. Oh, God. You get this really I, I, it took me sequence fucking... I do that like, sequence three beats times. everyone up with you're a in, motorcycle. You're doing motorcycle stuff uh, where you're running away, and the... Um, like a mech on wheels comes up and you have to fight it and it just sucks balls. You can't heal yourself. And my health got so low. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to yeah. die. Why am I I'm just going to need to restart well, this yeah. again? And it's just too long. Yeah. I want to get to the end of this game and there's bullshit in front of me. Yeah, it's like this like this like six wheeled mech that is just a worse version of another boss fight that exists in binary domain, which is a really cool version of that boss fight. If you haven't played binary domain, you should, um, despite its frustrations. And like, the thing is you can't really determine the speed of clouds motorcycle, even if you're like holding the accelerator. And so you just keep hoping that. Yeah. This Cause you have to damage all six wheels and then it goes into like a critical all, state. Like, and then, you have to dam- then you damage it some more and you have to uh, do that like four times. No, it's, and then you have to you, like, I save my super for the stagger yeah, state. Yeah. You don't do that much damage remember. to it when it's in its stagger state. That fight kind of sucks. And then the, like the last sequence of that game is like yeah. Sephiroth opens yeah. a portal to wherever the fuck i don't even know (laughs) and you go into it and you fight they're they're like the three apparitions of like the dudes from advent children then you go and fight sephiroth and then the game's over pretty much and there's like some giant monster who's i don't fucking yeah so so 
yeah, the arbiter of fate. Like, so, like, this is where... And they didn't have to do this. Like, they didn't have to make this, like, a statement within the game. But this is where um, Final Fantasy VII Remake kind of really just opens the curtain on what they want this project to be, which is a sort of meta-narrative sequel to Final Fantasy VII more so than a remake. Right? Because it opens up, and Sephiroth, you know, he comes down at the end of the Midgar Expressway, which is where you're driving to flee uh, Midgar and Shinra. And he, like, cuts up fabric in space-time with his katana and walks through a portal, which Aerith then, like, purifies or something. And you go and you fight the Arbiter of Fate, who gives you, like, who shows you, like, three apparitions that are just the, yeah, the Advent Children. Case. Yeah. You fight them, and they also yeah. use it to Sephiroth. Actually, they use it to <clears throat> Bahamut. Because, like, yeah, they summon, they summon and Bahamut and they become Sephiroth, Advent and children. you get this really Those are, like, the three bad guys who are trying to resurrect that ends... Sephiroth in the original Advent Children. Yeah. Like, I don't know. That that whole scene was just like, I wish he had done something else. I wish he Sephiroth, had, like... Yeah. I think you remember me explaining this as being like, why is this here? What is this? This is just weird. Yeah. Yeah, the th- the thing there too is like you can have Aerith like acknowledge because before you even walk into this pair, like Aerith acknowledges that going forward you- they are going to create a future that is unknown and unwritten, right? Like you can just have Aerith say that as the camera pans out to like the rest of uh the world. But instead, they decide that it has to be, because they want it to be this, like, this meta thing, it has yeah. to be before you go into the boss fight to kill God. <laughs> um, and, like, give these characters an unwritten future. And the thing that, I really, thing that I really disliked about this section was, like, when you defeat these apparitions, like, in the phases you fight them in... Uh, they like transmit memories to you, right? They transmit memories of the end of Final Fantasy VII to you, and like when they talk about these memories, like they treat them yeah, like the media you are seeing the worst hitting... possible outcome, which is just the end of Final Fantasy VII. Um, yeah, like the meteor coming down and like having to use the materia to sort of like protect the planet. And giving, like, sort of, you know, providing for a future that might not have people in it because we don't know if we deserve to live. Um, Which is such a good bit of that original game, which is, like, why I still, like, malign things like Advent Children existing. Um, Yeah, I mean, like, the fights are cool in this part, and, like, the big boss is cool. But like I don't know, I I just wish they'd done something. Like this game has so much energy, like at the point where the um, which call it collapses, the dome collapses. Like I'm wanting to see where this is going. Then it gets here, and I'm just like, oh, I don't like this. This is a bad ending. Like it loses steam here, and I think it loses steam when you pick up Red Thirteen and you have to flip a bunch yeah. of switches and shit. Yeah. 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 Yeah, when you're in Hojo's lab and sure, yeah. The like I mean the other thing is like we talk about this and I'm like, I'm not sure if I like these differences, but then you know, you, you fight like the Phantom Sephiroth and like it ends with a bad cut like a cutscene of him and Cloud fighting on like the surface of Meteor, I wanna say. And then like you leave having secured the ability to change yes, the Zach or whatever. Yes, Zack and Cloud walk by and the exact same time. And we see Zack. Yeah, well, it's like a sort of... It's this really weird scene because it doesn't explain to you that, like, Zack is in the past, right? Like, what you're seeing is the past with Zack, where instead of Zack yeah. dying at the yeah. end of... Uh, was it Tactics, Final Fantasy Seven or Crisis Core? Yeah, Crisis Core. Instead of him dying in that final encounter, he yeah. beats up everyone, picks Cloud up, and, like, y'all, they're limping to Midgar. And, like, Aerith yeah. and Cloud kind of, like, feel that Zack is still, like, an actor in this story, which is wild to me. Like, I, 
I thought that was I thought that was pretty crazy. Um, I was like, like you know, like when the Zach Fair like name did came up in the credits, I did get goosebumps. I'm not entirely sure why. Yeah, that part's pretty cool um, at the end, and the chip bag is different too. Like there is something like, about or that no, that it's a, like excite. a flyer of the uh, the dog that flies by Zach is different. So it's like an alternate reality yeah, where Zach survives instead. Who knows? Final yeah, Fantasy just Remake like, Now the two, question is, like, what I happened guess. to Zach once they reached Midgar? Uh, did you get the big Bertha, though? Did you give Barrett his... Yeah, uh, I don't even know what... From... Yeah, the big gun. Got the big gun. That gun's pretty good. Yeah, the big gun. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think I got... Oh, I don't know if I got every used. weapon in that game, but I know I yeah, got all of Yeah, I think I missed one of Tifa's weapons, just, like, and I went back and got it, and, and then I was like, oh, I'll play this in hard mode, and then I... Didn't even touch, yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, like, I don't know, the narrative implications at the end of this remake are... are wild in some ways that I think are interesting. I don't know if I was, like into the idea of this being like a sort of like a meta narrative sequel uh within this game within like the series I don't yeah know I, that's even like that's not what i want yeah i'm, I'm curious sure what I'm the second part will be it, i'm i'm there I'm for sure I'll buying the second like part at some point 90 percent of this game like like i am with this i don't give it i hate i didn't like the ending i didn't like you floating around this weird thing with alternate like this weird not reality place where you're fighting like i want the other stuff and then when it gets to this i'll roll my eyes and not give a shit um yeah how'd the sephiroth fight go you uh he's pretty easy for me i don't know how you he's yeah oh yeah he's he's not hard the problem is is yeah with how yeah. ai works yeah, in this game like enemy ai is they aggro whoever you're controlling um so you really just kind of have to be like, I went through the fight. I don't know if like there's a different sort of uh, uh, party composition you can have, but like I went through this fight with like Cloud, Tifa and Aerith. Uh, and like, if I would switch to, yeah, either I ended up, I would like use an up, ability with Cloud someone else and switch back fight as fast because he has the most health and defense. Doing. Yeah. Like, I'd switch to, like, Tifa to raise her ATB gauge. No. Uh, but, like the, I don't know. In AI, it's not super Overall, good at, did like, you like it? Consistently like, the whole attacking. experience of it? Yeah, I think, um, like, there's some scenes that really work. Like, I, I think I spoke about this a little bit, but there's a scene, like, right after the Sector 7 plate falls. And this is if you, I guess... These are also still using a uh, like a discrete companion approval stat that they had like within uh, like Final Fantasy VII, like the original, where if you take certain actions, like companions will like you a bit more. And there's this scene at uh, Aerith's mom's house right after that plate falls, and if Tifa likes you, uh, like if you've raised her approval rating by the end by the time you get that scene. You get this sort of sequence where Tifa kind of just lets herself like be really upset for the first time in this entire game, and it's this moment where she is like openly crying against Cloud about like how Shinra has basically destroyed her life twice now, uh, once being in Niflheim, this you know the fall of the Sector Plate being just the second event, and it's this really like tender moment between these two where Cloud like finally reaches around her to hug her. And it's just, it's a really sweet sequence that, like, ends in a really interesting way, uh, because, like, as he's, like, holding her, Tifa stops crying, she's like, Cloud, you're hurting me. Because of course he is, he's never, like, hugged a person before, uh, certainly not as a soldier, and he has no idea, like, how strong he actually is. Uh, and I thought that sequence is really cool. It's yeah, so like that, based on that your that interactions remake, with, like, that Aerith and Tifa, really really like it. Uh, like, I got Aerith... Like, my cutscene was us talking to her about she's grateful for stuff, for all the moments and yeah. memories, and how 
clouds made her more happy than you know but she also tells like cloud not to fall in love with her pretty much because she knows stuff that happens yeah yeah and then there's also one where you can get where that yeah, conversation is actually you and barrett talking if you yeah, if you miss a bunch of shit wild. if you don't do stuff it'll just be barrett yeah 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 it'll be barrett talking to you and like it's also a really good sequence with barrett too like it's never it's never treated as like a joke in the way that the sequence uh like the date night in uh final the original final Fe final fantasy 7 can be treated where the dogs like, are borking depending on the approval rating they of those do. three you, you'll take one of them out. See. <laughs> watch this barrett thing yeah, it's not bad. Uh, I fucking maxed out those uh, Tifa pull-ups, yeah. and I fucking hated myself after it. God, it took me like two and a half hours, dude. It took me like two hours. I did, I, I did all oh, three the of them in Tifa. Because there's this part where you're in the um, the slums of was it Sector Seven? I don't remember. It's it's where you do yeah. the Coliseum. Yeah, it's Sector Five, and there's a workout place. The first time you go, it's, it's Sector it's Five cloud doing squats. Yeah. And then the Tifa one doing pull-ups is just way harder and just fucking took me forever. But I did it, Austin. I fucking did it. I got that trophy. Yeah. 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 And the thing with like the, the pull-up sequence, the Tifa is like you have to you have to do it perfectly. <laughs> you know, uh, that's the only way that you're gonna beat it. Yeah. yeah like I did that too. Really because like I wanted Let to me, get, um... get Tifa like a champion belt. Uh, because it's a really good item to have. Yeah. I thought the combat was so addicting for me for a remake that it just I think that, that pulled me through the most where I was just I got in this flow with this game and I just I just loved it. Yeah, I like there's like there's a type like a mode in that combat that I really like. Um sort of specifically in like enemy encounters not necessarily boss fights i don't think i'm thinking of a boss fight in this game that i liked and i can't really yeah. think of one there's some fighting some uh, of the mechs were maybe fun. maybe uh like the, rude the first one but, where it's just you and barrett like, and yeah. then the uh, the one where you're dismantling the parts those are pretty good dogs are borking again. yeah the lead up to um, the airbuster is cool uh yeah. the, <laughs> Was it the flying one? The lead or was up to the, the airbuster is cool. I don't think like the execution is that interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the flying the airbuster is the flying one where you can like get rid of its bombs. It's like advanced uh, attacks. And, yeah, I don't remember or, either. But that one was okay. Uh, like um, resource. The house was alright. I didn't know when house. you're fighting the hell house that it would telegraph what elements it's using. So I just like when as hard as I can trying to deal the shitty damage you would do when you're doing physical attacks. Yeah, so I missed out on that, but I, I beat it and yeah, I wish there was some more side stuff. Cause after you beat the game, there's like, Oh, you can go back to the chapters and there's like the Coliseum, but that's it. Yeah. I'm sure there's more like Coliseum stuff in like the chapters where you get the fight they can go back and beat the, the game on right, hard like mode I yeah i don't know i think it i was still my favorite game it. of last year i like the combat sways me way more than like my bad time with like the last like two or three hours of that game so cool with it cool with it yeah it's just yeah, like it's it's really good. It's a really good one. It's just there's some filler in it. There's some teasing um, that's not particularly interesting. Like when you find that underground lab and you see like the pods, um, they don't do anything with. It. And then like when Hojo's about to tell Cloud what he is, and the ghost comes yeah, up and yeah, just I guess too... beat him up. Uh, yeah, like that sort of taking that approach with like deciding to make this an, a meta like sequel to 
seven and advent children was it then interesting yeah and i think it like i think brought back my like need for like wanting to play final fantasy games again like the music especially like that soundtrack's out on spotify now although it's all i think it's all in japanese i have no idea what's going on (laughs) but there's some tracks in that that are really good like the collapse expressway when you're doing the hand stuff with eris is really good uh the airbuster one is pretty good um it made me i reinstalled 15 after and i was trying to beat that but i kind of lost track of it um yeah. any closing thoughts for seven before we talk about Ratchet and clank <laughs> um i guess i don't know like hopefully the sequel tifa gets to be more than like the person who's trying to you know yeah uh, yeah who knows what they'll do with that humanize yeah. the end of, like shenra don corneo is kind of weird i found but... that really frustrating yeah yeah like leslie leslie was cool it's like oh yeah, yeah your um like your wife got great. your girlfriend and their wife got kidnapped and he's helping you out cool dude um he's just a dude he yeah he's just he just looks like yeah. a guy just a who'd dude. be in a different final fantasy party. like leslie just has a he's gun. just got that hair you know um, oh yeah, so okay, so I went into this like Ratchet and Clank hole, where I um, I played three of them, but I I think I played the remake of 2016 the yeah. most. So I went and downloaded. Um, there was two PS3 versions of Ratchet. And, there's three PS3 games in like the main line. There's Tools of Destruction, A Crack in Time, and Into the Nexus, and I started playing. A crack in time a little bit because i remembered having a lot of fun with that because that one is the one that has the mario odyssey type like small planets that are revolving while you're running around like you can see the curvature of the planet while you're running on it because they're like my- these small micro planets i was playing that a little and then i went into my ps3 store and i was like oh yeah i bet the uh but that hd collection mm-hmm. is on here of one two and three and it was but i couldn't buy it for my ps3 for some reason, when you go into the store, all the prices are blanked out. So I had to go buy it off my phone. So I played the second game a little bit. But yeah, I I forgot how much I liked the remake of that original game, Ratchet and Clank from 2016, which is like the game that's based on the movie, and that movie is based on the first game. But um, that game does like nostalgia in a fun way too where it has a bunch of cards you pick up and it has locations from this game you're getting as cards but it also has like guns from all the other games and when you flip the card and you read the text it'll tell you what game it's from of like the nine or ten rash and clank games there are and a little bit about it which i thought was cool and it plays well, and it's fucking beautiful. Like, I, I forgot how, like, you get into the combat of this game, and you're shooting the enemies and robots and stuff, and there's just particle effects going everywhere. Have you? I think last time we were talking about this, you, I think you've just played this one. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. I... Yeah, it's the only, this is the only one I've put any time, to, like, time into. It was the 2016 yeah it, and i'm surprised i never beat this one because i have played the shit uh, out how of good every, it looks on like the ps4 like when i had my ps2 back in the day it was like yeah i had my brother had jack and daxter and he played those ones and i played the ratchet and clank games and then i played them all on the ps3 and i just never got around to like i got like half i had like i probably have like seven hours left of this game and i picked it up and i just started binging through and beating a couple sections i think i'm at Almost at the last boss where you're on the deplanetizer that's gonna destroy some planet or something. <clears throat> Cause the bad guy Drax is trying to make his own planet out of pieces of other planets he blows yeah. up. Um, Which that's kind of a fun bad guy thing. You know what? Yeah, so I'm yeah. I'm going through that, I getting mean, it's ready. Amazing. It's I wanna play that. Most new ratchet and clank was it called a rift and something yeah 
like a rift in time yeah, rift apart like a sequel yeah he's like i think the bad guy yeah it's actually like a this. sequel kind of to into the nexus apparently which was oh, like a oh, rift apart? like a 40 dollar game that you picked up on uh ps3 that was okay. made by like one yeah. of the side studios from insomniac while they were working on sp- uh sunset overdrive or some or fuse or something Yes, those other games is what I will call them. Fuse. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I have, like, a relatively fond enough memory of going I re- of playing this one. I remember not being super into how it handled, like, its own Yeah, because I think the levels in okay. those are very similar to the way they were in the first game I, like layout wise so they, they can feel a little old yeah and then um yeah boy i they were like hey guys twenty dollars we're putting stubs the rebel zombie on these consoles and i was like i'll just fucking play it dude those games are that game's weird Oh, and they, they yeah, so used they that in the promotional footage, Austin. Like, that like you, made on the Halo. when I went to GameStop and grabbed a copy of this when I was a kid, it sat on the box, used with the Halo engine, and boy, does it fucking feel like it's on the Halo. Oh, it's got checkpoints, dude. You'll get to lo- levels, <laughs> parts of the levels, and it'll checkpoint you there. So whenever you die, it'll quick reload you back to where your checkpoint is, and it feels like the Halo checkpoints, which is really funny. Um, it's just, it has a, it has a hover warthog, Austin, which is really wild. It's like so you have some, ve- you have vehicle sections where you just get into like a hover car that has like some weird it's like, I, trash thing that you shoot. At, I don't know what it is. You're just shooting balls of gunk at people. Yeah, you wake up um, so out of a grave and you attack these teenagers, and then the combat in this game is you shambling around, like waving your arms at people and hitting them, and then you'll bite them and they'll turn into a zombie, and you'll create a horde to go through these like linear levels, and like your army of zombies will die, and you have to kind of like get enough of them to where if like a bunch of cops are shooting at you you kind of need a couple zombies in front of you to take the shots or they'll kill you and then as stubs you have like three abilities you have a fart which is really (laughs) yeah of as an original xbox game where it's like uh, it'll stun everybody and come up and bite their brains um you'll throw your hand at people and you can go take someone over and if they have a gun you can shoot you can throw your spleen as a grenade, which isn't bad. And it's like, it's a sticky grenade from Halo. Like, it'll just stick to people, and it's really funny, because you can get some good clutch shots. And then I think there's one where you roll your head as a bowling okay. ball. Okay. I don't know. This game is weird, because when you're in the levels, there's not a lot of ambient music. So you're just hearing people screaming, and you biting people's heads, and then people more people screaming... And then the bosses in this game are dance-offs with Simon Says things for your, like, the different colors of the controller buttons, which is really weird. Are you kidding me? And it plays Earth Angel. Yeah, it All plays right, Earth Angel you know, like, and some uh, other shit. Indigo like, Prophecy uh, did Mr. That, Sandman. So. The soundtrack to this is, like, a bunch of indie bands from, like, the early 2000s doing, like covers of 50 songs which is really fun like they have like the albums on spotify and there's some good stuff on there i'm gonna send you the link to this boss like it's weird this game's weird it's fine i'm like halfway i think i'm like three or four levels in it's got co-op too like it's got split screen halo co-op also yeah so those are those are mine um looks like a Mm -hmm. What did you do, Austin? Were you playing more Baldur's Gate? Is that what it, that says? Yeah. I did. I was. 
Uh, because last time we had spoken, I just kind of started a druid playthrough. And now I've reached the point where I've realized that Larian has no idea. Larian really loves to make RPGs where he can talk to animals. Uh, because that yeah, is such a useful feature in Baldur's Gate right now. Um, and sort of, like, no, no, like, this is how you can avoid fights. So, like, to give some, like, context of the situation, there's a bit where you go into a grove, right? Like, a grove filled with some druids and tieflings. Uh, tieflings being, like, a Satan people, we'll say. Um, and they're being, like, attacked by goblins. And the druids want, like, the, tief the tieflings to leave uh, and get out. And they're trying to, like, close the grove off to uh, everyone forever. And there's a bit where, like, one of the kid tieflings has stolen, trying to steal a statue and is being caught and is being menaced by a druid with a viper. And you can talk to the druid to sort of get them to call off uh, their snake. But to make that work, you have to succeed in some, like, dialogue checks, right? Uh, because, like, this druid really wants the snake to bite this kid and kill her. Uh, but if you talk to the snake, because now that you can talk to animals, you can talk to the snake. And the That's snake funny. just looks at you and is, like, talking like, yeah, man, it's the same shit, different day. It's like, I don't want to do it. She really wants me to do it. You know, I'm just here. You can just talk the snake into being like, you know, you don't have to bite the kid. He's like, yeah, I don't want to bite the kid. Um, like the snake, even the snake is like better than like the druid who's like, yeah, like let's poison a child. Um, so like it's situations like that that you can find now that you can talk to animals and they're really interesting and really fun. Yeah. Uh, it's, he's like, you, you remember the dog that like, I talked about being able to interact with. Yeah, now you can talk to that dog. <laughs> and, uh, like, dog has a lot of information mm. for stuff that's going to be happening, I guess, in the post, in the following it's acts good. of Baldur's Gate. Well, the... That's funny. Uh, good, and also, good. when you pet the dog, he I, says thank I, you. I want to play that. I want to be a druid. I want to talk to the yeah. dogs. Yeah, like, turns out being a druid is just really helpful, and I have no idea if I'm, I'm going I'm glad to, to hear that they this game as a are doing some fun isn't stuff a druid with, like, at this point. Their ability to talk to animals. Yeah, well, I mean, they'd always done that with, like, divinity, right? Because there's a feat that you can choose at the very beginning of the game called Pet Pal, which lets you talk to animals. Um... And that's not class specific or anything, but like it's something that you could do for the entirety of both of the Divinity games, and it's probably the most essential feat in that game to at least make sure someone in your party has. Uh, but you know, because this is D and D now, like it's a class based spell, so it's I don't know, it's going to be kind of hard to go through Baldur's Gate without a druid. Yeah, to, unless well, they're going cool to give hear. us like another druid. Glad you're having uh, a good time with that. Still, Larian's later. still continuing to support that game as well. Malton, this early access state. Yeah, yeah, like it's in early access. And like when this had come out, like when this uh, first build popped up, people were like, I can see a really cool RPG in here. And to tell you the truth, I couldn't. Like, I thought this was a really frustrating game in a myriad of ways, but, like, at this build, at this, like, 1.4, or, like, I'm not sure what the build number is at this point. Um, That's cool. I think I think I'm think i starting yeah. to see, like, the game everyone else was seeing. Nice, nice. Well, I downloaded so a game excited. that is very fucking bad. Day this is probably now. the worst game I've ever played on a console, Austin. Yeah, I can't believe I'm being so mean to call it. No, I downloaded It's called Enlisted. Wow, I can't believe you're being and so mean And like it was, like, a Xbox... <laughs> original it was okay it was a series s series x launch game launch game along with ps5 and it's supposed to be like this world war ii shooter i think it this was supposed to be like a pc this is like a pc first person shooter because you played it this on console this does not play well austin like anything you think of like movement in a normal game or aiming and shooting does not feel good it's swimmy and the the like sensitivity is all fucked up and off but also in these multiplayer matches is you have a squad 
that you go into. So when you start a match, you have to have three yeah. squads because when your squad dies and you respawn, it'll make you pick like the airborne division instead of your regular division. And they all have different weapons and loadouts and skill trees and stuff that you're fucking with. But basically in these multiplayer matches, you have yourself and three other people who are AI party members in your squad, as long as, as well as you fighting other people and of themselves and three AI people. So it's like, I think it's like, Mm -hmm. it's probably eight people versus eight people. And then everyone has three people in their squad. Because when you die, you're going to you're gonna spawn as one of your other squad members until your whole squad is wiped. But uh, this, this game sucked, and I couldn't fucking play it for more than an hour. And I was like, I'm, Microsoft, give me a refund for this. I'm going to just yeah. go play. I'm going to go buy, buy Call of Duty instead. Because I want... Like, there's this guy who plays Battlefield, and he was playing this on... Um, his channel called Jack Frags. And I saw it was a new game that came out. And I was like, oh, this will probably look really nice on my Series S. And I, I want something to play. And I was like, no, this was not it, Austin. This is a bad fucking game. Yeah, like I've, I'm looking at this trailer. Yeah, like, until like I think four or five people are running at you idea. in the same direction. And then there's like 20... There's like a mob of 20 people running. Like I saw a conga line of people just walking somewhere and I have a sniper rifle and I'm just one shotting all these people right behind me. It was weird. And the AI is stupid and you can just shoot them. Like what will happen is the person yeah. who's an actual player will run forward mm. and you'll see the squad Congo line behind them. So I'll kill all his squad first and then I'll kill them pretty much what happens. There's a bunch of weird upgrades and stuff. I don't know. I refunded it. Yeah. This is going to be free to play at some point. And until then, they have these founder packs that are $30 to where you have access to the Americans, the Russians, the Germans, or the British. And they're only allowed to play on certain maps. So you, so when you buy the oh, founder shit. pack, you have a fully upgraded squad that you get. But if you're playing as anybody else, you have a bunch of low-level squad people, pretty much. So I refunded yeah. it, and Black Ops Cold War was on sale, and I bought it. I don't know. I played a couple matches of Cold War. It's, it's doesn't feel as good as Modern Warfare, and I haven't played it since I bought it, honestly. Because I, I just ended up playing more Battlefield Five, and I, I reinstalled Battlefield 1. So I'm just fucking around with chilling out and playing shooters by myself, which is like a thing I'll do where I'll just snipe in those maps and just go be by myself and try and get some shots. Oh, it's just relaxing for some reason and invigorating, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Shooters. Yeah. I had this Zen moment where I was yeah, just shooters. playing. I played it for like four hours and it was just like on a bunch of different maps in battlefield. Uh, five. I was just like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just hanging out. It's my day off. This is what I want to do. No, it, it was I guess. weird. Let me send you this other clip. Non endorsement of enlisted. Yeah. 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 Like I'm look. I'm looking at enlisted. It's just like it's. No, like the maps are here, bigger than a cool. battle. I the, don't okay, it's not bigger than a battlefield map, but it's longer. Like there's um, this point where I'm taking. It was like a, it was kind of like rush. In Battlefield, where you have a, a an attacking and a defending team. And then there's two objectives you have to control. And then it'll push back a segment. And we just kept pushing back and back and back. But their equivalent to Conquest is only three objectives. A, B, and C. And you're just mm -hmm. running around doing infantry fights and shit. Whereas Battlefield will have like six objectives on a bigger map. And actually make you run back and forth between stuff. Or is this just some weird triangle fighting? I don't know. The guns look nice. It looks nice on a Series S. Like the foliage looks really good. But it's swimmy and it feels like shit. Yeah. Oh, 
thankfully you can always yeah i am playing the single player i heard it's the single player is interesting you only play the multiplayer, multiplayer. no zombies just just the just shooting people it was okay yeah, was... it feels not as good as modern warfare yeah yeah it's like yeah, yeah, it just I there's some like, it's a bit more like the smoothness of Modern Warfare isn't there because I think you know it's a different engine and a different build. You don't have the double tap to super sprint like you do in uh, Modern Warfare as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Like it's they, like the Cold War is like the older Call of Duty. Yeah, engine. that's pretty much uh, what it feels like. Because it's, yeah, it's, it's Treyarch, who I think, made this one. Yeah. With some other people. Because Black Ops 4 came out before Modern Warfare, and they yeah. didn't go off and make, like, a third game, another game like Sledgehammer does with, like, Advanced Warfare and stuff. So, I don't know. It was interesting. Um, whatever. I'll probably play some more Black Ops at some point, and then it looks like you played some Skyrim as well. Talk to me about that while I fix my microphone stand. Yeah, I played some Skyrim. Yeah, they put this on Game Pass. And, you know, I told myself, like, you know, when the, like, the Morrowind, Oblivion, and uh, Skyrim showed up, I told myself, like, oh, I'm finally going to get into Oblivion, right? Because I own Morrowind. And I haven't given that the time it deserves, probably. But then I ended up downloading Skyrim 2. And the thing about Skyrim is just it's very easy to just sort of reach this I don't want to say meditative but this just sort of like blank state where you're able to do like just kill time with it while you're doing other things like I listen to podcasts while I play Skyrim right now and it's been just a great time you know like you're going through some of the you know the mix like the sort of hit or miss dungeons in Skyrim uh doing some side quest stuff uh, hanging out with like the characters, what like such as they exist within Skyrim, the ones that have at least more than like two lines of dialogue they can say to you. Huh. Uh, this also has like all the DLC, like the special edition <laughs> of Skyrim that they put on Game Pass has all the DLC. So like now I'm constantly being attacked by vampires. Yeah, you want the big house? Like you know, speaking of time to kill and, and stuff, and that's what I'll do when I get on Battlefield. I'm just like yeah. killing time, having fun, playing something comfortable, have a podcast on in the background. Same kind of yeah. thing with me. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a good way, like, I think this is a good way to interact with Skyrim because, like, when I, I got Skyrim when it came out, uh, because I was needed a game to play until like Mass Effect Three came out, and the uh, I guess either I was either going to buy Skyrim or I was going to yeah. buy Assassin's Creed. Yeah. I want to say Revelations, which is like the last of the Ezio games. And I told like the guy at GameStop because this you know this was the time when you could do this at GameStop. Uh, like I was looking for one that was going to. Yeah, like when we used to have conversations with uh, towards Skyrim, was like that going to last you a very long time. Yeah, yeah, I miss those days. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I, I put a lot of time into Skyrim in high school. I, I think I played that like every day for the better part of two years. It's it was a really it's a really bad time for Austin the person. Um, but like being able to return to it in this way and like also with the creation club like mods that exit that are in the special edition that you can download uh because like you know they they did this with Bethesda, they did this with like fallout 4 and their skyrim re-release is like oh now you can download mods hmm. uh, like from their own like in-game client and so like, i downloaded some stuff to give me like xp boosts so that way i'm like level i'm at like level 80 or something and like all of my um, skills that I want to use, like sneak, lock picking, archery stuff, is all like maxed out. Uh, it does create some problems though, because the game does scale with you at certain points. So I immediately got to like level 80, but I had a bunch of like uh, crummy equipment, went to a combat encounter, and was just nice. destroyed I, um, by people. Like, I think I played Oblivion the most. That was like when I was in high school, the one that was yeah. out. Also, not bad. Very fun game. Yeah. 
Yeah, Oblivion. Oblivion is cool. Like I played a bit of that. Not as much yeah, as, like, I'm just running in those Oblivion like, gates and doing that. Oblivion shit. so far has been neat. very funny. It's very spooky, spooky times. All right, I think that's uh, that's it for the podcast. Hey, you know, thanks for joining us this yeah. week. Uh, hopefully, there's some some cool news next week. I'm I'm probably gonna play more Ratchet and Clank. Maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll touch this. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War campaign. I hear it's like five hours long and does weird shit. But, um... I really, I really want to play Loop Hero, Austin. I really want to play Loop Hero. Ooh, Austin just died. What is this, Austin? Oh, farewell. This is the farewell yeah. bit from Oblivion. <laughs> of... Yeah, it's just... Oh, farewell. Yeah, I mean, the Cold War... Yeah, what? I do... Yeah, I, I'm with you on Loop Hero. That's something I'm interested in. I I think hopefully next week, like, de- again, depending on how expensive this bet is, it is, like, I will, ha- I will have played, like, Adios, nice. which is a game about a pig yeah. farmer who doesn't want to... Loop Hero looks really for cool. The mob anymore. I just hear so much good things and about Loop Hero. Life is Strange too. Have you That's been looking at that? Sure. Yeah. I've, you know, like, Loop Hero is a thing, um, like, I heard people talk about it, and it's kind of like Dwarf Fortress. Is this the Audios game way, you're talking about? Right, right. I don't I think this is the Loop game Hero you're like, talking about. Is this? this is some Twitch.io no game. Way. I looked up Audios game, and this, this is, is the second game. No, this is not Audios. This is obviously what you're playing. This is like some, um, what's, what's that game that no, took everybody no. by storm that okay. was like a dating sim, but it was actually like a horror game? <laughs> Monster. If you, hmm. I just typed adios into itch.io and I no. found what I'm looking no. for. No, I didn't. You I looked had up, to purchase. I, may, I might have spelled adios wrong. No, no. This is the second thing. Of... Yeah, I did. I did. I no, did. I put did. an you I. Did spell <laughs> I spelled it a i d o s. It's good. It's good. All right, we. I gotta stop. We we gotta go. I'm at Travis23 on Twitter. All right. We gotta go. This pig farmer thing looks neat. Oh, it's a first person game. Oh, oh you're shit. So cool. Alright, till next time. <laughs> yeah.